Hello, you're watching Capital Talk with me, Noor Akhtar Amind, uh, under Capital Update. And uh, this is our second edition with Mr. Martin Wong, our okay. special guest. Uh, he's the editor of TradersTruthReview.com and he also wrote um, the book, A Dividend Don't Lie, uh, as you see here on, the, on this table. Supercharge your investing approach for big profits, becoming rich fast. How you can invest like the very rich and co-authored with Bill Wormine in Master the Markets Trading Manual. So um, he's actually the master in investments and trading. So in our past edition, we talk about the website as well, traderstruthtv.com. So now um, you have also given um, some tips on the investing. Yes. So um, during this edition, as we promised to our viewers, um, what and when is the perfect timing given our current uh, outlook of the market? Now, timing again, it's a very sensitive. If you look at in which school of thoughts have you come to, if you're looking from a fundamental investing, they will say any time is a good time, right? But if you look at from a technical side, which uh, my book has focused, it's that you always want to buy when there is panic. You know, Warren Buffett always say you want to be buying when there's blood in the market, and there's a lot of truth in those words. The reason why is uh, people always say you know you cannot time the market and a lot of these people mm. are basically academicians. They do right. a lot of research mm. and that's why they say it, it can't. But to be frank with you, people that I do know insider in the fund management industry as well in the stock market, timing is very very critical because mm. it does enhance the performance of the funds or, or the portfolio that we are talking to. Now the key thing is finding the right uh, so-called recipe or system for timing is, mm -hmm. is important. Now, timing is only good if the person believes it. Now, mm. uh, again, people are in the fallacy, always believe they are looking for a 100% guarantee system. And to be frank with you, there is none. Right? <laughs> if we can live with a 60%, 70%, good timing, and overall you make more wins and more loss, why not use it? Now, the mm. key goal here is right, to beat inflation. Now, if you, if you have followed out the book that we have, the recipe, you should be averaging between 10 to 12% a year. Mm. Are you happy with that with the investment? Mm. I think that's a good figure. Yes, exactly. Yes. So that's the figure we are going for. Now, the key thing here is to make sure that uh, it, we, to get consistent return. And look at consistent return, we also look at the company, the type of company that they do. So timing itself does play a function, but the fundamental does, mm. uh, it's also important. So when you combine the timing plus looking at the fundamental of the company, you get a best of work. And that's right. the whole purpose of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's nice. So how does invest regularly, because uh, you touched on consistency, right? So how does invest regularly help during a volatile market? Now, if you have a volatile market, again, uh, we, our focus is always focused on the company. Now, if you look at the market volatility, what are we looking at? You're looking at the composite index or you're looking at the uh, index. Now, remember, index, there will be some stock up, there will be some stock down. But if you look at the individual companies in this case, mm -hmm. now ask yourself that question. Are you investing on the indices or are you investing on the company? There will be some companies that does very well. Now, if you look back in year 2008, a lot of the consumer companies, big brand names like BAT, Nestle, uh, Dutch Lady, yes, they did fall down during market volatility. Mm -hmm. However, when the market recover, it's got the new high. So what, how does it explain? So my goal is always look for sound qualities company that pays good dividend yield. And that's how simple investing always to be. And also try to time the market if you can. There are many methods in. The method that I prescribe is volume spread analysis. Right. Okay. Before we go on the mistakes that investors usually do, mm -hmm. or maybe their lack of certain knowledge, um, having said that, which market segments would you encourage investors to buy? Since now, you're talking about volatile market. Okay. Now, it all depends on the risk profile of the investor. I think it's very important that investors know themselves first. Uh, I, I just got an email from a lady. He said that, oh, I invested in penny stock. I lost a lot of money. Then, you, then I asked myself, do you know you can take the risk or not? Because a lot of people treat the stock market like a casino. And, and in fact, that's something, it's a wrong mentality to ease. If you want to gamble, 
go up to you know to, to Singapore or go up to you know the nearby resort here mm -hmm. and you have better chances but our market it is does offer opportunities if you know what you are looking for mm -hmm. so the key thing in here is look for good solid companies and that way you have better odds because like it or not market will have a water uh, are volatile but in but overall, when you look at the sales and earnings, we are looking for companies who have very strong uh, sales and earnings because they have recurring income. Right. To give you an example, uh, during bad time, if you invested in a company like Dutch Lady, people still need to drink milk, right? right. And children still need to buy. Well, because of recession, will they stop buying milk powder? Yeah. No, no, really. So they'll buy. So, and also on top of this, companies like this are able to hedge against uh, inflation because when the prices of milk powder go, go up, what do they do? They increase the price of their uh, retail products. So that actually maintains the margin of the company, which in turn gives better performance in, in stock. Okay, Mr. Martin, so are you saying that um, when, when, when we're going to talk about encouraging investors to buy in sectors such as retail? Yes, uh, consumer retail, which mm. is to me, that is essential items that you need, uh, things that you need to eat, things that you need to uh, not luxurious item you need to drink those kind of like for drinking beverage company like FNN but mm -hmm. again you always have to look at the whether uh, it is uh, well priced or not then mm -hmm. we are looking what we call a margin of safety right. which is very important so at least uh, when we buy into a company we are buying it when there is a, a below fair price of the company right okay so um how about industrial markets then such as commodities or plantations now if you're buying into commodities and plantation mm. i think it's also a good buy uh, mm. don't forget that uh, malaysian is being the second producer in commodity we should have some exposure of your portfolio in there now like it or not if you look in terms of uh, china population and india population especially now with the high raya and also coming the babali people need to do a lot of cooking now, organic right. growth in terms of world population, we're talking about 2%. So, there will be still people consuming uh, uh, so-called uh, crude palm oil. Although the price rises. Although the price rises, they have to. They, there's yeah. not much alternative in there compared to uh, what we have soya bean. So, uh, again, look at each company that's involved in plantation stock. Mm -hmm. Some may have overrun and some do offer opportunity. So, investors need to do their own homework. That is why I always stress that it's always good to know some education and not leave entirely to your advisor or whatever person you talk to. Right. Okay. So, um, okay, I will ask a uh, quite interesting question. How about investing in individual companies? I want to know as well, like... Air Asia. Okay. Now, as I said before, the focus always been investing in individual company. Now, if you look at individual company, you also have to look at the industry, mm -hmm. whether uh, thing. Uh, now, I don't want specific uh, look at, but I'll just look at uh, Air Asia. Now, what kind of industry Air Asia is? Mm -hmm. Is in the airline industry, right? So, right. in the airline industry, there are a lot of factors goes into it. What happens if there's a war? Mm. Right. What happened if the crude oil prices go all the way up? And what happened there is uh, another SARS. So all those considerations, how does that affect uh, on it? So one right. of the things I'll tell people is if you can stand volatility, you go ahead and get into an airline stock. And like it or not, airline stocks these days, there are a lot of competition is coming up. There yeah. are budget air, there are luxury air, there are also media segments. And now we have new airports coming up. Yes, new airports coming up. But then again, when you have a little thing like, like a terrorist attack, or touch wood, maybe oh. there's none, <laughs> right? people are scared to travel. And remember, all these uh, companies, they have bought their aircraft. They all are financed heavily right. by uh, leverage by debts. So imagine if anything of this happened, the planes had to sit on the airport. Someone still need to service the interest True. of this, this one. And they can't fly them, you still need to pay the, the pilot. So have investors need to think about all those. So those are important considerations. And remember, another factor, even if it's flying at a full uh, factor load, most uh, airlines, I believe, they're flying mm -hmm. around 75% uh, loading factor. Now the question is, if this loading factor is not improved because then that's going to affect their profit margin wise. So mm -hmm. remember, every flight that flies off, if one seat is not filled, that's lost revenue forever. Yes. So again, I, I'm always favorable to a very, very boring uh, consumer <laughs> stock. And that's how I made my money for my, uh, for my clients and all those people who buy more. I'm happy. And now at the end of the day, if you want to look for thrill, 
look it for elsewhere. Don't look in the stock market. The, you know, but the the thing is, the truth is, people look for thrill. Uh, they want to make the super triple digit or even four digit return from a stock market. To me, that's fallacy. That's wishful thinking. If you do, you know, you're one of the unique one. Uh, uh, and you look at the, the greatest investor in the world, Mr. Warren Buffett. Now, he's been very consistent with his policy mm. investing, focusing on real uh, value company. And over the average, uh, the last 30 years, he's doing like 26.7% return per annum. Wow. And that's very good. Mm. And look at where he is now. <coughs> he's one of either the second richest man in the world. Yeah. Now, all we got to do is maybe just learn a little bit from you know, Mr. Warren Buffett and together use volume spread analysis to do our timing. <coughs> You do much better than a lot of the funds, you know, in Malaysia. That's my message to all. All right. Thank you, Mr. Martin Wong. What a very um, useful session we have here in our second edition with him, uh, the editor of TradersTruthReview.com. Maybe you should actually take a look and get addicted to it. So, Mr. Martin Wong, thank you, uh, thank you for staying with us and uh, you too. So, stay with Capital Talk in our next edition. Have a nice trading day. Thank you.